So if you are new to Lego mock building, as I am, by the way, mock stands for my own creation, then these tips might help you bring your mock to the next level. So I built this mock for Easter, and if you missed that, then you can check out the video right here. But both during the build and after the build, I learned a few things that would make this mock a lot better. Let me share those tips with you right now. Number one, angles. No, not angels, although those were in the mock. Angles. When you start your mock, decide which angle is the primary angle you're going to be displaying it from. I usually want to add all these details as if I'm a minifig walking through, but many of these details won't be seen if they're on the back, on the side, or even underneath. Some of these minute details might not even be caught on camera. So that means it's okay to leave a few unfinished things on the back side of your mock. You also want to make sure that the main focus of your mock, for me it was the tomb, is unobstructed from your primary angle. So if I spend all this time on the rock work on the front here, and then I decide to stick another building right in front, I put something else in the way of all those little details I was working on. I think on this mock, I learned my lesson and I did a pretty good job of making sure that the main focus was not obstructed by something else. Number two, height levels. When doing an outdoor scene such as this Easter mock, add some depth by using different height levels. In all honesty, I think that's something that this mock could have used a lot more of. It's relatively flat on the same level in this whole area in the front here. Now, as an afterthought, I tried to add in a few hills on the side, but since it was an afterthought, it didn't really look natural. One of the ways that I've seen a lot of people do this is by using plate levels. You can use plates to make a gradual incline in your outdoor scenery. Number three, use the right piece. And this one's kind of a two for one kind of deal. Now, I'm still building my piece count as I continue to work on mocks this year. And throughout the year, I'm going to be having a lot more bricklink orders to build that piece count so I can have the right color or the right piece that I need for the job. But sometimes you just don't have the right piece and you have to make do with the pieces that you have. For example, let's say you're building a green garden hill area over here, but you just don't have enough green pieces. What are you going to do? Well, this is where tip number one comes into play. Remember, you're showing your mock from a primary angle. So there's a lot in the back or even underneath that you're not going to see. So if you don't have enough green pieces, use other pieces for underneath. If you look at the back of my hill right here, you can see some blue pieces. You can see some unfinished areas. Second, use those interesting pieces. For example, the roof of my tomb here is made primarily of road plate ramps. You can see I can get this nice curve on the top of my tomb using road plate ramps. Huh, who would have thought? You can see this little hill piece here is actually the hood of a vehicle. Take a piece that you might not expect and use it for something different. Well, that's it for now. I hope to keep learning and use those new techniques that I'm learning to make my mocks even better. But what? Ben, Who are you? this is Ben from the future. From next week, you have to come with me. Okay. Um.